Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Ember series. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about Ember routing system. Let's do a quick overview. Ember comes with a routing system that integrates with the browser URL. For example, we wanted to go to localhost 4200 slash cart. The Ember will start to search for the cart route inside the app slash router.js. This file behaves as a sitemap for a developer to be able to quickly see how the entire app is constructed. Once it finds it, it will looking for the related JavaScript files, which are cart.js under the app slash routes and the app slash controllers. These two are different, and we will talk about them later in this tutorial. With the logic under those two JavaScript files, it will start to render the template that we define, and then we can see the changes. After we understand the logic behind the scenes, Let's look at different type of routes. There are application routes, basic route or regular route, nested route, index route, dynamic route, and for for route or like wildcard route. I know there's a lot of things, but please bear with me right now. It's very easy and let's go through them one by one. So first of all, Ember has a default application route, which is tied to the app slash template slash application .hbs. This is the file we edited in the last tutorial. It's also the starting point to our web app. You can see there is an outlet element. So all the things in the sub browse will render it in here. And let's change the color back to normal. The next is basic route. Imagine we are building an e-commerce website. And there is a route called slash closed. So let's stop our app and do ember g route close so g stands for generate ember will create and update all the related files for us as you can see here in the router.js the close route was added now let's go to the templates slash close let's add some messaging here and start our app then we can go to the slash close. Forgot to say. And you can see the message updated here. You can see closest works under my application. That is because the content inside the closest, it's replacing the outlet element inside the application route. Now it's a good time to use the crew browser extension to that I mentioned in the previous tutorial. Let's go to the Chrome Web Store and search for Ember Inspector. The first one. Nice. Let's back to our page and look at the Chrome Inspector. You will see there is a new tab called Ember in here. Click on it and then go to the routes tab you will see the current route is highlighted uh, from application to close and you can click on the current route only to only see the current route the next is the nested route imagine we have a subcategory under closest which is t-shirt so we have a new route called slash closest slash t-shirt so let's close this and open router.js and do ember route g route closest slash t shirt you will notice in the router.js you just simply add a route setting inside the callback function of the parent route and that's as some message inside closest slash t shirt as well so this will be t shirt works and save and let's go to the nested route t-shirt oops we forgot to start our app so emperor s and then we refresh the page you will see the t-shirt works is after the closest works and then you will notice in here that in the ember inspector you will see the nested route listed in here it's under the closest so the next is index route. At every level of nesting, Ember automatically provides a route for slash pass named index. 
The index route is the default route on the current level. For example, if we just landing on the slash closest, we're at the index route. And let's back to the Ember inspector and uncheck the current route only. You will see there is a close.index and also the global index under the application route. So right now we want to add some content inside the index page. If we just add in the closest route, like this index content, and save it, it will show up on the trial route. Like currently we're on the teachers page, but this thing shows up in here. So what we need to do is to create an index route explicitly by Ember G route closest slash index. Then you can see there's an index template here. So let's move the content into the index route and save it. And let's start our project. And refresh. You can see the index content disappear. And then if we go back to the slash closest that this content shows up in here. The next is dynamic route or dynamic segment. Let's say you want to have a page like slash item slash one two three or like item slash three four five to display different items based on the item ID, which is the last segment inside the URL. And you want to hard code every single one of them. So here, let's create an item route, Ember G route item. And let's go to the router.js and then we need to overwrite the path to item slash item ID and save it. So let's try to go to the item slash one. Oops, we need to start our app. And refresh this. And there's no content. And then let's add something here. So item works it's still not working and let's see uh, what's there and then it says no model was found for the items for dynamic route in ember we need to specify the model based on different id so let's go to routers slash item.js and we need to specify model in here so the dynamic segment was uh, sits in the params And this is our item ID. It's from the prompts. And then let's return the item ID and save it. You can see the item works. So what if we wanted to leverage this model? So it's back to items and then item works. And it's just display the this the model and save it you will see item one works. And if we change the route to like two, like item two works, and two, three, four, like two, three, four works. The last one is the 404 route or wildcard route. You can define a wildcard route that it's matched multiple URL segments. This could be very useful, for example, if you like a cache or route, which is useful when user enter an incorrect route URL not managed by your app, Let's say we go to some random page, like slash random. Okay, and then this is not the route that we expected, but there's no error so something here. So what we want to do is to create a new route. So ember g route not found. Then we override the no found route path into slash asterisk path. and save it. And let's start our server. And refresh our page. You will see the error goes away. And then also the, the text message inside under the application app shows up in here. So let's add some thing messaging here as well for, for not found. And we'll see here for, for not found. So if I change to some other random page like this, it's not found. But if we back to like closest, it's working. And like item 
page is also working. That's pretty much about this episode. Hit the like button if you love it. Subscribe if you want more. So for the next tutorial, I will talk about the router and controller. See you next time. Peace.